So here's what the F-150 looks like right now. I cleaned up the frame a little bit just so you could see the rivets a little bit better. Like I said in my last video, I'm going over the Crown Vic setup. So I'm going to have to get rid of the subframe. Um, just a word of advice, you're going to be taking out a lot of the structure out of this frame. A lot of the support. So you're going to have to weld something in going across. It's a piece of small square tubing, so I'm leaving the bumper on just in case. Um, once I get the Crown Vic subframe in there, I'll take the bumper off just to, so I don't have to work around it. Um, for these 90s trucks, you're going to have to get a kit. I got mine from team321.com. There are those pieces of C-channel resting on the subframe. You can see how they have a curve in it. Basically, these 9th gen F-150s, 90s, and I believe 80s, the frames aren't straight. I know for a fact on the 90s at least. You can see just how much of a curve this side has. So it won't bolt up. Um, I know on this side for sure only one hole will bolt up without this kit. There's two main bolts. Um, you can see on that side how they line up. I know it looks like a bomb went off in here. But you're going to need this kit. It's going to not only box in the frame, strengthen it. It is 100% necessary. You will not get all the bolts to line up just with how the frame is like this once you take the subframe out. Um, I'll go over that a little bit more once it's time to put that in. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and grind out all these rivets, get all this taken out, and go from there. So here's what it looks like right now after cutting out the subframe. It's a lot of cutting. I think I've spent four or five hours out here already. One thing is you're going to be cutting out a lot of these rivets. I mean, on the spring purchase as well, I already had mine cut out. So let me just add that. And another thing is, is that on a lot of these rivets, it's sandwiching three pieces of metal and they are incredibly stubborn to get out. Um, but other than that, it's a lot of cutting with like a cutoff wheel. If you have a, plasma torch or a regular torch or you know somebody that has one just go get it it's gonna save you a lot of time and a lot of effort just don't get too crazy with it um, one thing something really important is you're gonna have these welds on the inside of the frame rail and you're not gonna be able to see them unless you're actually looking for them um, so you're gonna want to cut out just, you know, the biggest chunk of this subframe that you can, and then just piece by piece start cutting in more and more and more to get to where you can see those welds. And again, a plasma torch or a regular torch is gonna be your best friend. Um, you can kind of see on this side where this kit from 321, Team 321 sits, sorry. Um, you rest them on top for like the meantime while you drill your holes and stuff like that. But I'll quickly show you right now why this kit is so necessary. You can see, and this isn't sitting exactly right. I still have a lot of cutting to do. But if you match up some of these holes, you can see one of, one of these holes just doesn't even exist. You, this one will after you cut it out. But I mean, you can see here. I think it sits a little bit more inboard, but come on, focus. You can see... This kit's 100% necessary. And again, this kit has existing holes in it that are going to line up with, like, the holes for your motor mount perches. So, I mean, it's all just straightforward with this kit. You're going to get your center line. You're going to box in the frame, make it a lot more square. Once this is all drilled out and everything, this actually sits in, not on top. It's going to sit below, and then you'll be able to, you know, kind of stitch weld from there. Um... I have some more work to do, obviously, cutting out, you know, more of those welds. I got a box in where I notched it for the uh, steering linkage because this truck sat so low it would sit on the steering linkage. Again, I mean, just on that side alone, you can see how much metal is just missing. So you're really going to need this crossbar. My bumper's still on it. Overnight, I'm going to jack this up and support it so it's not too front heavy. But yeah, that's kind of what it looks like. So I just wanted to take a quick video and show where I'm at right now. This is actually how this kit is supposed to rest. I know in the last video it was sitting on top, but this is what I meant by, you know, it goes underneath the frame. Um, I haven't been recording a lot of this stuff just because it's a lot of cutting. You're going to have to get creative with a lot of stuff. 
Um, a lot of it's not really crucial until you get to this point. That's why I wanted to pick up the camera now. So the big deal is, like I said, with these frames, they are curved like that. And you can see what I was talking about by making this frame, frame you know, nice and square by adding this kit. But another thing is, is that these frames also curve up and down. You know, they kind of have a wave this way too. So something really important you're gonna have to do because these kits, when they get bolted in and get welded in, they have to sit flat. There can't be any gap, not only on this top piece, but on this bottom piece. So over on this side, you're gonna have to cut a little relief in the frame so that I can sit flat. Damn, this thing doesn't wanna focus. But you can kind of see over there where I cut a relief and it allows the frame to come up a little bit and sit flat. And then the same thing had to happen down here as well. You're gonna have to cut along the bottom side of the frame too. You're gonna have to cut a relief so that the bottom part of this frame can sit flat. Go on the other side. So you can see how, and this is hard, how the frame's sitting flat against the frame. Um, So this is kind of how it sits. You can see again how necessary this kit is because I do have these two motor mount perch bolts lined up and you can see again how this hole just doesn't exist in the frame. Um, you can see I've cut even more out of this frame right here. I wanted to leave in as much of this frame as possible but there's this piece right there yeah that basically runs across for the gearbox. And you had to get it out anyway to be able to make this relief cut. But yeah, I still have some more fine tuning to do. Yeah, we'll check back later. I'm doing one side at a time, just because there's so much material getting cut out of this frame. I did end up putting it on jack stands. I know it doesn't look like it's on there, but I'm using the tip of the jack stand to hold that up. There's no real, I'm not pushing up on it. I didn't jack up this truck. I just slid it under there where there is support but it's not resting on it but yeah i'm just doing one side at a time right now I'll check back later all right so after doing a lot more fine tuning this is where i'm at right now you can see i have the holes drilled for those main bolts for the subframe but like i was saying you're going to be doing a lot of fine tuning and getting pretty creative but your end goal is you want this kit from team 321 to sit as flush and flat against this frame as possible um you can see that curve in the frame how you have to make that relief cut so that it sits nice and flat come on so you can see that there just the same relief cuts as i mentioned in the previous video what i'm gonna do now that i have obviously everything bolted up and clamped it down is I'm gonna do a final weld on a lot of these relief cuts to kind of finalize them so they don't move anymore. And then I'm gonna take the kit out from Team 321. Um, I'm not gonna final weld anything right now. I know another window has to get cut in on this side to clear. All right, so this side's pretty much done. I'm gonna throw a couple stitch welds just to hold it in place for now. Um, obviously that needs to get boxed in, but I've got the holes drilled for the crush tubes. You can see the relief that I made to keep everything straight, to allow this to sit straight at least. I welded that shut or whatever you want to call it. And then down here as well, it's probably going to take forever to focus. Come on. Yeah, so just straighten that up to allow the kit to sit straight but yeah all the holes are drilled kind of see that one that one was a little off center but it gets welded up anyway um, yeah that just needs to get boxed up I'll probably do that last I'm gonna stitch weld this make it pretty strong but also you know just in case I got something wrong you know I can grind it out um, 
then after that, I gotta go ahead and do this side. Um, something I wanted to talk about on this side is, like I said, I notched this out prior because when this truck would air out all the way, it would rest on the steering linkage, so I had to notch it out. It's a good thing and a bad thing because this is an area you have to, you know, cut so it can bend up and allow it to sit straight. So pretty much I don't have to do anything right here that I know of. I believe right there on that curve, come on, I need to cut and bend straight. But my only problem right here is on both sides of this frame, you're going to have to cut big windows somewhere in this area, but you're going to have to cut a big window and box it in again. So you have clearance for the upper control arm, I believe, and part of the subframe. Now, the only problem with that is because I have this notched so high up, if I'm correct, if, I'm, if I believe the window goes right here, I'm going to basically be cutting out, you know, 90% of this frame. This is going to be the only thing leaving, you know, the only thing left to support it. So I'm going to have to get creative with that. If anything, I'll box in from here up really nice and strong and then leave this like this. And once the subframe's there, I'll, you know, box it in and weld it up to where it'll be nice and strong again. But I won't know how exactly I'm going to do that until then. Um, something I wanted to show you on this side as well. And the reason why it took almost a day to pick up the camera was on the other side. When I was talking about the rivets sand sandwiching like three pieces of metal is when that kit goes in here and rests against this frame, some pieces of metal, like right here, you have to, you know, peel those off and get it to where it's gonna sit in there flat. So on the other side, both top and bottom were like that. So it takes forever to kind of cut into here, to cut into this weld or whatever it may be, and kind of peel this off. And it's not just as simple as shoving a screwdriver in there and peeling it. So that's just something you need to be aware of, especially on that side. Uh, if your truck's still stock, you're not gonna have to worry about this. Like I said, I notched this when I was when it was bagged on beams. Um, but yeah, you are gonna have to cut here. And again, here it is. Another thing I wanted to talk about is how to, where you're gonna stop. So what I did is up on top. Oh yeah, you can see it perfectly. I'll make a cut. But I won't go all the way through. So you can see where I'm basically ending. And you're going to have to set up the kit to see where this needs to end. But you can see the slot I made in there. So that once I've peeled this down all the way, it'll you know, break off right there. But yeah, this is easy on this side. It's only one piece. But on the other side, you're going to be fighting it for a while. But like I said, just grind down that weld. What I'm using is this oscillating tool with a metal bit on it. There you go. Yeah, these have been my best friend recently. And I just cut into where the weld would be. You start at the very corner and I'll just hammer a chisel in there just to start it. And then basically I take this tool and I just start running it until you know I, I can see through it where I can see daylight through that weld, and then you're able to peel it down. But yeah, you're going to be easy not to start cutting into your frame. But yeah, I figured I'd just cover that a little bit. It's going to be the hardest part, cutting everything out and peeling out all these extra layers. It's going to be a nightmare. All right, so I kind of have both sides in right now. Like I said, that one's stitch welded. That's uh, not completely set in stone. This one's kind of in the final stages of getting mocked up and then it's gonna you know follow the same steps as that one getting stitched in but now that they're both effectively in i wanted to fit up this subframe kind of make sure everything was cool um, i wanted to take back something i said earlier i misspoke like i said this is my first time putting a crown vic kit in here and there's not that much information out but earlier i spoke about how i filled in a notch i had down there for my steering linkage and I was talking about how that may or may not affect cutting out a window on this side. Um, 
you can see my little patch down there. But I believe I misspoke. I don't believe you're going to have to cut out a patch, a window on this side. Um, just to give reference, when I talk about cutting out a window, you'll see on this side, there's a, a kick out kind of. You can see how more recessed this in. There's a kick out so that the steering box can bolt up right here. And this definitely has to get a window cut out for sure because the control arm is not going to fit. Now, in some of the videos I was looking at, I believe, or I thought, excuse me, that on the other side, you had to do the same thing. So that's what I'm talking about when I talk about there being a window cut out. But before this video got too far, I wanted to step in and say that I believe I misspoke. I don't believe there needs to be a window in here. You can see how much more of a gap I still have for a bolt up down here because the alignment pin that these have I can't zoom in. But not a, this already clears. Whoa. This already clears the way it is and it has to come up some more. So I don't believe a window gets cut out. So the subframe's officially in. Nothing's too permanent. Um, on this side, I didn't have to cut out a window. I've seen pictures and I have could have sworn on Team 321's website somebody cut out the window on that side. But I mean, we'll see. But as of right now, not only the control arm fits on that side, so on this side, yeah, you're gonna have to cut out a massive window. It's gonna interfere right here on this back side. So you're definitely gonna have to cut out that window. It's a pretty massive window. I'm probably gonna stick a plate from the back side in and then weld it up, probably knock this down flat so we have a curve to it. It's kind of hard to do a step-by-step -step on how you get here. Um, if you're not comfortable altering your frame, cutting stuff out, being able to confidently box it back in, I probably wouldn't do this. There's not that much directions out there or information. That's kind of why I'm doing this video. I think from here on out, I'll probably time lapse and give you know directions and stuff like that. But to get here, you're gonna need to be comfortable and confident with you know your fabrication skills. You're gonna have to be able to, especially on these 90s trucks. I think before the 90s, the 80s trucks, they're a little bit easier, and then 70s trucks are just standard C channel. They're incredibly easy to do. These 90s trucks, if you're gonna do this, um, you're just gonna need to be confident in your abilities. It's not easy, you gotta get creative. A lot of this stuff is you know structurally important, so you need to gonna you're gonna need to be comfortable with your ability. Brother, this guy stinks! Alright, so here's what it looks like right now. Not much has changed really. I went ahead and boxed in that window over here. You can see. So up here, I know it looks like I cut out too much, but if you look down there, it's really close. So there's that. I did kind of like a pie cut with two pieces to clear it. Obviously I did that patch. Um, there's a lot of weird stuff going in on this side, so we'll see what happens there. There's going to be a lot of weird angles and stuff. I'll probably box in both these pieces and then just run, you know, something over it just to make it look nice and uniform. And if it's supposed to be there, I don't know. We'll see. Same thing on that side. I'll probably box it in just real simple and then run a piece of thin plate just to make it look uniform and Nice and even, we'll see. But yeah, that's kind of where we're at. Um, so far, so good. And this side's still the same. But yeah.
All right, so as you saw in the time lapse, we got everything patched up. I got some more welds in on this side, on my kit at least. You can see kind of where my patch is on that side. Kind of what it looks like. And then this side, you can see where I boxed that in. It honestly doesn't look as jank as I thought it would. Like I said, I'm going to be running some thin plate just to like wall it in or box it in whatever just so it kind of looks uniform um but honestly it doesn't even look as jank as i thought it would it obviously looks like there's some type of modification here you know kit wise anybody that's going to be looking at this is going to be you know probably you know asking about the crown fit kit anyway so i mean obviously they're going to know you know major modification was made to the frame but um, like I said, I'm going to be, you know, running some whoa, thin plate right here, um, just to make it look a little bit more uniform, but honestly, judging based off of how thick this is, and if I make it meet right here where the frame's really thin, this is going to look super chunky until it gets to like this thin part of the frame, but we'll see because that's, you know, clear as day, obviously something's been done there and Hopefully on this side, after everything's done, it won't be as noticeable. So we'll just see. But yeah, I got in those uh, little holes welded in. Still gotta do this side. Come on. But yeah, we're boxed in kinda. Doesn't look too bad. Um, yeah. So as you can see, I went ahead and knocked a bunch of stuff out just off camera um a lot of it was just the crush tubes uh, the four main bolts i mean it's pretty straightforward you just put them in weld them in i welded up the holes for where the kit from team two two one was bent just welded those holes up um i still have that like that i mean honestly it doesn't look that bad um, if you're going to be looking this deep, like I said, you're probably going to be aware that it is a kit for the Crown Vic swap. So, you know, you're going to be aware that there's going to be modifications done. Um, obviously, I can still add that little triangle that I was talking about, that little kit to, or that piece I was talking about to box it in. But honestly, I feel like if you take this huge piece of frame and narrow it down to right here it's gonna look even weirder um depending on how i feel about it later obviously i can just go back and weld that in but yeah that side's you know obviously boxed in i got those you know hinge mounts in but yeah that's it